the Lord, everybody. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Aren't you glad that you are able to live stream one more time? Amen. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers that have been there, stood there, thick and thin through the valleys, oh God. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your attitude, your gratitude. We congratulate you and we honor you today on Father's Day. Not just today, but every day should be Father's Day. And we thank God for our men standing in the gap. Amen. Praise God. Let's honor our Father. Amen. Our scripture is taken from Ephesians 6 chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. Ephesians 6 chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. The NIV version. Put on the full arm of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full arm of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckle around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace let us pray oh gracious heavenly father we thank you we come with humble hearts oh God with bow down heads we thank you God for this beautiful rainy day oh God we just thank you for the sunshine that shines within our hearts oh God what where will we be without you, God? You are the great creator of mankind, the creator of this world, God. And we just can't say thank you enough, God. But we give you the highest praise, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for saving a wretch like us, oh God. We could have been gone, God, but you allowed us to stand here in the midst, God, in your presence, God, Lord, to say thank you. And God, we know that there are people that are going through right now, God, those that are beds of afflictions right now, those that are homeless, jobless, oh God, those that are incarcerated, oh God, those that have been abused physically, mentally, sexually, oh God. Oh God, we ask that you will come down right now with your mighty hand and your mighty power, God, and your anointing, God. Lord, let them come running. What must I do to be saved, oh God? Heal, God, the sin sick minds right now. Oh God, the mass shootings, oh God. Oh God, move on every leaning side, God. Lord, we know that you can and we know that you will, God. Oh God, we just praise your holy name, God that you will come into the midst of this service, God. Let it be all that you will have it to be, God. Thank you for your anointing reigning on the pastor, God. Continue to use him in a mighty, great way, God. Let the power of God just overflow him right now. This congregation, God, this church, God, our community, God, this town, God, Lord, this state, God, our country, God, Lord, and the whole wide world, you are everywhere at the same time. And we thank you, God, for listening to our prayers. And we claim that they will be answered. Bless our fathers everywhere, those that have children, those that may not have children, but are mentors to those that need you, oh God. Lord, we ask you to bless and anoint and move and 
Just let your Holy Ghost power continue to keep our men right now in the name of Jesus. We claim the victory. We shout hallelujah. And we praise your name, God. And this is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Can we do ourselves a favor and give God a hand clap of praise for he is worthy? Hallelujah. We serve a great God on today. This song simply asks you a question, how great is our God? How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? And all will see how great, how great is our God? Can you help me say how great? Sing with me as I got and all will see how great. Come on, can you help me say how great? That's it right there. Come on and say, how great. Sing with me is our God. And all will see how great. Come on, one more time. Can we say, how great. favorite part it says you're the name above all names and you are worthy of our praise and my heart will see how great is our God come on and say you're the name and you're worthy Come on and say, you're the name, and you are worthy of, and my heart will sing, is our God. Come on, that's it. Can we sing it one more time? You're the name. Say how great Sing with me 
And this is why I sing praise it up. Cause you're here when I need you. You answer when I call you. Just help my heart believe. You're the perfect father to me. And when I can't feel you, sometimes I even doubt you. Just help my heart believe. You're the perfect father to me. You're here when I need you. You answer when I call you. Just help my heart believe. You're the perfect father to me. And when I can't feel you, sometimes I even doubt you. Just help my heart believe. You're the perfect father to me. You're here when I need you. You answer when I call you. You're here when I need you. You answer when I call you. You're here when I need you. You answer when I call you. Just help my heart believe. You're the perfect father to me. You're here when I need you. You answer when I call you. You're here when I need you. You answer when I call you. You're here when I need you. You answer when I call you. Just help my heart believe. You're the perfect father to me. And when I can't feel you, sometimes I even doubt you. Just help my heart believe. You're the perfect father to me. Just help my heart believe. You're the perfect father to me. Just help my heart believe. You're the perfect father to me. perfect father to me he's been a perfect father just help my heart believe you're the perfect father to me and when I can't hear sometimes I even doubt you just help my heart believe that you're the perfect father to me come on and give God praise right there hallelujah hallelujah Come on, he's been a good father, and he's been great. He's been great, and we serve a great God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. Good morning, First Baptist, and good morning to those of you that are our visiting friends. We are so thankful to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. We thank God for what God has done. I want to just uh, give a footnote that um, you may take note of the fact that some are not wearing their masks. We are, uh, uh, they've been vaccinated, praise God. And so we do have it uh, one way or the other. You can wear it if you so choose. If you've been vaccinated, we encourage you to, uh, that'll be your choice, whether you want to continue to wear it. We thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, you will be hearing from me soon because we do anticipate church opening uh, real soon, uh, official opening. Uh, and uh, please be uh, uh, abreast of it. Or you will be receiving an announcement as soon as we uh, just cover a few more steps. Again, good morning, First Baptist, and good morning to each and every one of you. Are you glad to be here this morning? We thank God for you. Good to see you. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. And for those of you that are listening online, God bless you as well. We are so happy that you have joined us. This morning, we want to uh, come out of the Word of God, out of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to be there for a few weeks uh, to talk about the armor of God. And last week, we kind of introduced it, the armor of God. But today, we're going to come from a particular verse, uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 14, a portion of verse 14. Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to come from the, the portion of verse 14. And the scripture reads like this. From the NIV version of the Bible, it says these words. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. 
Let me read that again. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Let us take a moment and pray together as we prepare our hearts for what the Lord has to say. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this day and this opportunity to come before you. We thank you for the word and we thank you for the song that just been sang. Thank you for everything that's taken place, the prayers that were sent up for the sick and shut in and the infirmed. We pray, dear Lord, that you would bless the word to each and every hearer, that they may listen for themselves, find something out of this that might help them along the way. This is our prayer, and we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We indeed do pray. And let everyone say, amen. Amen. The belt of truth, or may I say, we want to call this, you need your belt. You need your belt. I don't know about you, but uh, when it comes to our belts, they are important. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, those of you that got up this morning, uh, the belt might not be the first thing uh, that you look at. Uh, in fact, when you're getting dressed, uh, you may dress in your uh, whatever you wear, and the belt might be one of the last things. For me, it's one of the last things that I grab. And every now and then, if my pants are snugged around my waist, uh, I might forget about my belt if I don't look in the mirror. Uh, for those of us, and men in particular, women as well, you have loops around the sides of your waist. And my wife had to remind me and say, you missed one of your loops. Thank God for my wife. I would have walked out uh, not having been fully dressed properly. But thanks be to God for belts. For belts hold things together. Not only that, it may even tuck some stuff in so that we can have a tucked in stomach and so forth. But it holds our shirts in, our skirts up, our pants up. Uh, it holds some pants up. I've seen, I've seen my brothers and sisters. Uh, folk had on belts, but uh, the belt was below their waist. It was on uh, below their thigh area and down. I'm like, what in the world? How in the world can you walk? or even run or do anything, and why would you want to show all that stuff? See, the belt has a purpose, and that purpose is uh, uh, well orchestrated with the way that we dress on a day-to-day -day basis. But I got news for you. We're going to talk today about this belt that you need as a Christian. For those of us that name the name of Jesus Christ, we need our belt. Now, this is a spiritual belt. You can't see it. Paul, the Apostle Paul, gave this illustration for a reason. The people that he wrote to understood emphatically what he was talking about. They knew something about the Romans and how the Romans operated. They knew something about the Roman military and that they had all this equipment to protect themselves. See, some of the equipment that they wore was defensive, and they did have one offense or several offensive weapons as well, the dagger and the sword. But the others are defensive to protect one when one is fighting against the enemy. Last week, the Bible tells, told us to put on the full armor of God. In other words, if you leave off part of your armor, you are making yourself vulnerable to the enemy. And the enemy will find your vulnerabilities, and that's where he will attack. I remember seeing, you know, I like to watch sports, but I, I'm not as into uh, the boxing and the kickboxing because I don't like to see people get hurt. But every now and then I'll turn into a station and I'll see these guys, and if they see, if, if they're fighting each other and they find that I hurt that guy in his rib, I notice that every time he cringes when I kick him right here in that rib cage, and he'll keep kicking him in that same spot. Because what 
you want to do is win the fight. And you find that if your enemy or if your opponent has been wounded, that's what you want to do is take him down in the midst of his wound. And that's what Satan does to us. If he finds out that you are wounded, he will keep kicking you and kicking you and dabbing and stabbing at you in the places that hurt the worst. That belt serves a, 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 a big purpose. What purpose does the spiritual belt serve? Well, first of all, you, I want you to notice with me. Notice with me. When the Apostle Paul talked about this, he said, uh, put, he, he, so that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. And he told you to stand, therefore. He said, but put on the belt of truth. Why did he name the belt first? Because as I indicated, the first, that's not the first thing we put on in the morning. But he mentioned the belt, the belt of truth. Well, the belt was so important for these individuals. It's important to understand that the belt served uh, uh, the purpose of keeping your sword and your dagger in, and, and, and also to hold in place your breastplate. So the belt was something that held everything together. And so therefore, if the belt was uh, out of whack then, and, and, and your shield fell out of place, then that makes you vulnerable. If you didn't have, if your sword not strapped on right or it falls and so forth, then the belt has not done its job. But the belt of truth is something that we all need to be concerned about. The truth as it lies in the word of God. I want you to know today that that belt is so, so very, very important. Can I just tell you just a little story about this woman? She was in college. Uh, when she was in college, you know how we have to read a lot, right? In college, you have to read books. But she was reading this book, and it was boring. Not only was it, it was extremely boring, but it was also cumbersome for her to read it and, and very difficult because it just did not appeal to her at all. It's interesting because of the back, the book, the only reason that she read it because it was required of her education. So she tolerated it and she forced herself to read this book. Well, she tucked it away and went on a few years later. Uh, while working in her field of study, it, it, the story says that she, she met a young professor and, uh, and quickly fell head over heels for this guy. And uh, fell in love with him and, became, and they became engaged. And one day, one evening, while visiting her home, he saw this boring and this uh, clumbersome and this book that was difficult for her to read. He found it tucked away uh, collecting dust on the bookshelf. And so he pulled the book down from the shelf and he quickly informed her uh, that he was the one that had written this book. And then all of a sudden, she took that book and sat down up all night long reading the book. And it wasn't boring and cumbersome in a way because, of, uh, uh, because of, uh, of the change of the fact that to her lover, the one she loved, she was engaged with, wrote the book. Why the difference? Why the difference? Oh, I tell you the difference. What made the difference is the fact that she now knew the author and she loved him. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, when we become Christian, or Christians, something similar happens. Yes, sir. When we read the Bible before we know Christ, it may be cumbersome. It may be boring. It may be difficult. I tell you, and, and it may be uh, it may not even be exciting. It may be irritating or may I say not intriguing. But once we become a Christian and know Jesus Christ, for ourselves, then all of a sudden, that, that boring book that we used to read that did not have any significance in our lives, all of a sudden, it becomes intriguing. It becomes a, a, the most a, in, an exciting thing that we ever read in our lives. Scripture tells us that the Bible becomes something that we want to put on inside of us, like milk for a newborn baby, we crave the spiritual milk that only God can give. And I tell you, that's what happens to each and every one of us when we get to know Jesus Christ. This belt that I'm talking about is so critically important. Why? Why? Well, I want to just tell you that the Bible tells us in verse 14 to stand therefore having uh, uh, your lawns, and I'm using it from another version, uh, girded about uh, your, your, your waist uh, with truth. You want to have it done with truth. Well, truth, truth. When you become 
a follower of Christ, you will soon discover, no sooner than you accept Jesus Christ, that you have a new enemy. And that enemy is the devil. Yes, and with relentless consistency, uh, Satan will bombard you uh, with temptations and trials and sometimes with persecutions to the extent. In other words, Satan, our enemy, declares war on each and every one of us when you accept Christ. And guess what? When you, I, I don't know about you, but when I became a Christian, he brought every assault that he could to try to take me down because he wanted me to go back into the lifestyle that I had previously been in. But thanks be to God, if you put on your belt, the belt of truth. Now that belt of truth, I'm going to talk about that momentarily because knowing this, you, you got to wear your spiritual armor in order to defeat the enemy of your soul. You see, he, 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 uh, uh, the, the Greek words in, in, in verse 11, I want to back up to verse 11, uh, that word put on is in duo, in duo. It's a military term in the Arabic imperative that means command, command that means to be endowed or to be fully endowed, if you will, uh, uh, or endued with, with, with this situation. So the, the Arius tense tells us that our outfit is not something that we have to purchase. It's something that we acquire once we accept Jesus Christ. But guess what? Every now and then, I find out that when folk come into Christ, sometimes they don't put on what God told them to put on. You got to put it on so that you can fight. So if you refuse to put on your armor, then the devil is going to defeat you. Oh, yes, it will. And that's the reason we have been commanded to put it on. Yes, sir. Because if you keep it off, you will be defeated. Because you can't fight the devil without God's armor. Am I right about it? Oh, yes. So he told us to put on the whole armor, the entire armor. You can't just put on part of it and leave off the other part. Because, again, that makes you vulnerable to his assaults. Because he not only will it assault your body, be it some of us experience sickness, and not only will it assault you, he'll assault your mind, he'll assault your spirit, he'll assault you in whatever way that he possibly can. That's what Satan will do. Now, as we receive this command to put on the armor of God, God immediately begins to unveil a wardrobe of armor. And the first one that was, and that's interesting because the first one that we're talking about this morning is the belt. Well, my brother Sue, now let me ask you a question this morning. Uh, now, 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 when you got up this morning, I'm sure that most of you uh, have on your belt. You have on a belt. Thank God for belts. Because, again, it's, it serves a very, very important aspect in our lives. Uh, yes. Now, now, now he, but, but, but the thing about the belt, uh, it says put on your belt. The belt represents the word of God, if you will represents the word of God. You see, these other parts of the body, things that we have to put on, like the breastplate, the righteousness, and so forth, the breastplate, uh, uh, see, see, there are certain things we can see and certain things we cannot see. You cannot see this spiritual armor. No, no. You don't see your spiritual belt, your breastplate. Paul is giving this analogy so that you will understand how prepared you need to be when you meet the enemy. So since we cannot see it, then we need to understand the, 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 uh, what, what, the, what the Bible is telling us to do. And we have to be spiritually attuned. And the way that you get there is to make sure that you do follow the prescription that the Bible gives you. I want to just share something with you about uh, uh, an illustration of, of something. One of Satan's strategies in our lives is to sweep us away from the word of God and get us tangled up with the world's way and the things of this world. And I want to talk about this uh, uh, little article that I found uh, on uh, uh, the, the word of God and uh, uh, TV guide and, and, and the Bible. Some of you may have heard this before, but I want to share it with you. Satan's uh, assaults against uh, the people of God. Listen to this. They lie on the table side by side. The Holy Bible and the TV guide. One is well worn and cherished with pride. Not the Bible, but the TV guide. One is used daily to help folks decide. No, not the Bible, but the TV guide. As pages are turned, what shall they see? 
Oh, what does it matter? Just turn on the TV. Then confusion reigns. Oh, they cannot agree on what they should watch on the old TV. So they open the book in which they confide. No, not the Bible, but the TV guide. The word of God is seldom read. Maybe a verse or two before they fall into bed. Exhausted and sleepy, as tired as can be. Not from reading the Bible, but from watching TV. So then back to the table, side by side, lie the Holy Bible and the TV guide. No time for prayer. No time for the word. The plan of salvation is seldom heard. But forgiveness of sin, so full and free, is found in the Bible, not on TV. And I stop by here to tell you today, folks, we need to have this belt on us. So in our passage today, God says that the truth should be found in the position of this belt. This belt that we're talking about. Why was the belt so important to this Roman soldier? I said simply, the belt held everything together. And that's why we need it. And the Bible holds us together. When you read it, it holds you together. Yes, in the same way that that truth of God is the stabilizing and securing hands that hold our life together when you're depressed and down and out. The word of God can hold you together when things are not right in your life. Yes, wear your belt. The belt of truth. It'll hold you together. And therefore, in explaining the need of God's word, I, God commands us to daily, in other words, every day of our lives, we ought to make the word of God a central place in our lives and uh, to have a dominant role in our lives. It ought to saturate our very spirit like a spider web. We need to be in the word of God. God commands us to make it a daily. He told Joshua uh, to get involved. You would even with your young people. Get involved in it every day. Yes, sir. We go to work every day. We eat every day. We do a whole lot of things every day. But don't forget the word of the living God. If it wasn't for God, where would we be? So he told us to stand there for having, having this belt of, uh, of righteousness, the belt of truth, if you will, around our waist. And so you see, most of the spiritual weapons that we have in Ephesians 6 are, are invisible. But the belt of truth is different. I want, to share, I want to share with you how. Can anyone visibly see your faith? No, no, no. They can't. They cannot. Uh, but they can, they can see results of your faith. Uh, yes, sir. Can, can, uh, yes, sir. Can, 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 can anyone see your, your, your shoes, those shoes that we're going to talk about, the shoes of peace? No. They, they might see uh, the results of your peace because they can see the peace of God in your life. Uh, can anyone uh, see the breastplate of righteousness? No, no. But they, can, they might see the results of righteousness that is in your life. But they cannot see, visibly see, your righteousness. Well, the Greek word for the truth. In this passage, uh, it's, it's a peculiar word. I want you to look. Look at this. The word truth, aletheia, refers to something that has been laid tangibly and clearly before our eyes. Can I tell you how, you can see how, how the word of God is tangible and clearly before your eyes? Oh, yes, yes, my brother and sister, and I want you to listen to this. There are many things that, that are real that you cannot uh, see uh, with your fleshly eyes. For an example, God is in the room right now. The Bible tells us where there are two or three gathered together in the name of Jesus that he would be in the midst, but you cannot see God. Oh, you may feel the presence of God. You may feel the anointing of God, but you do not see God. I just want to give you that example. And yet, God is in the midst of us. Yes. And it's by his grace that he's in our midst. And I want you to know uh, you may feel the anointing. You may be touched by the power of God. But visibly, you just don't see. The, the Bible is the only spiritual weapon that God has given us visibly. We have it in the form of a book. Praise be to God. And guess what? The, uh, the spiritual armor is invisible. But this Bible, the word of the living God, 
The word of the living God is tangible. Oh, we can read it. We can open it up. We can read what the Bible has to say. And the words can have a profound effect on you. And I don't know about you, but it was the word that changed my life. And I'm so glad that I'm wearing the belt of truth. Uh, the belt of truth so that I can hold my other, that can hold everything together in my life. The other weapons that I need in order to be successful. You want to be successful? Then obey the word of God and put on the belt of truth. Oh, put it on, put it on. Oh, uh, put it on, put it on now. It is a weapon that we can, uh, we, we, we can't, it, uh, the, the weapon that we can see is the word of God. It's not only a weapon that we can see, we can hold the Bible in our hands. We can read it with our tongues. We can hide it in our hearts and we can keep it in our possessions. Not on the shelf, but right there by our bedside. Turn the TV off, turn everything off. Empty your mind and allow the word to saturate your heart. Folks, this is peculiar to me, but it's significant. If anything that elevates my value for God's word, I tell you, uh, the, that Bible that you are reading uh, from one end to the other, it's, a, it's, it, it's not more, it's not just a mere book. It is the holy writ of God. God's word, God wrote it. God sent men and women to actually be the, uh, the authors of this, but thanks be to God, he orchestrated God, it, that's God's word. And we ought to believe it. it is the infallible word of God. It is God's holy word. And we ought to trust it from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation. Believe the word of God. Wear your belt of truth. Wear your belt of truth. I want to tell you something. I've done a lot of things around here, and I'm so glad. that One day I went to uh, a, 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 a nursing home with some young people and some of the adults here, and the young people were going to dance. And, 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 and they played the music, and all of a sudden, they came and grabbed Pastor. I'm like, oh, y'all want me to dance with y'all? Well, anyway, they grabbed me and wanted me to do the holy dance. But those words, while the residents were sitting there, some of them got up and started doing whatever we were doing, praise God. They were so excited about the word of God. That's what the word can do. The word can be so exciting. And those residents, they came out, and they were praising God, and I, I was up and doing what the young folk do. The word can have that kind of effect on you. That's what the word can do. I'm so glad for the word of the living God. Oh, my brothers and sisters, it's through the word that we are sustained. You are where you are today because of God's word. And if it wasn't for God's word, I asked myself the question, where would I be? Where would I be? Oh, the life I was living, I'd probably be dead, be dead and gone. But thanks be to God, the word met me where I was. Right there in the muck and the miry clay. But he placed my feet on a solid rock to stay. And I thank God uh, for what he did. There's power in God's word. Oh, yes, this belt of truth can have a profound effect on us. Yes, wear it around your waist and wear it right. Don't wear it beneath your waist. Wear it where it's supposed to be so that it can hold everything together. Hold everything together. That's what the word of God can do. I literally, God's word helps us stand strong against the wiles of the devil. Now, if you look at the Greek word, that means methods, methods. See, the devil got a, he's methodical. He's strategic. He's, 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 he's powerful. He knows exactly. So it stands against the methods of the devil. Our enemy wants to trick your mind. Yes, sir. He is crafty and he's subtle in this uh, in 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 in, in the, the spiritual world, he seeks to place little thoughts and lies and little seeds of deception in our minds. Yes, he does. And yet, daily reading God's word reveals Satan's methods and allows us to stand against them. Yes, sir. So the more you read God's word. <laughs> You will have something to stand against the devil. But the second word uh, that I want to say, talk about is the word device, device uh, in, in, in the Greek word, it, which is uh, very similar to the word wiles. And, and the, the word devices is uh, a marriage between two words, the mind and the intellect, the mind and the intellect. 
or the word confusion. So what the, what the devil wants to do in your mind and your intellect, he wants to cause confusion. In, 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 in this word, we know that Satan seeks to confuse our minds. And one thing he wants you to do is doubt God, to, to, to praise be to God. He wants you uh, to be confused in your life. And the third word I want to say is deceive. Satan is there to deceive us. Uh, again, the word deceive bears a strong resemblance to the words wiles and devices. This word actually means to roam around. You know what? Uh, Satan, is, uh, he, he roams around. He wants to seek who he may devour. And that's what he wants to do to you and me. Just like the planets, they, they orbit around, or like uh, planets orbit around the sun or, or the earth, praise be to God, he roams around and he wants to deceive the people of God. I'm almost done, my brothers and sisters, but I want you to know today that the belt is important. 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17 says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for reproof and it's profitable for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You got to get into the word so that you can have everything you need when Satan comes before you. Yes, sir, and he'll take care of you. And finally, finally, my final, final thoughts. Praise be to God. It was the blood uh, that made a difference uh, in all of our lives. Yes, sir, it was the blood that made a difference. I'm reminded of something that happened some years ago. And I'm not a military person, but uh, 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 I do have some folk here that have been to the military. And they've seen all kinds of things. They've seen blood, especially if they were on the battlefield. They've seen blood. But there was, there was a story that happened back in Iraq. That there was a, two men that were uh, mortally wounded, praise be to God. And one of them was so bad, he, he needed a certain blood type. So they went throughout the camp of the, uh, of the, of the soldiers and asked, do you have this type blood? And there were a bunch of them that came and gave their blood, and the man's life was saved. I stopped by here to tell you there's somebody who gave blood for the entire world, and that was none other than Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that the blood made a difference? The blood of Jesus that came, that, that Jesus, when he shed his blood on Calvary's cross, you were saved. You were saved as a result. And since you were saved, wear your belt. Wear your belt. Wear the belt of truth. When you go home tonight, wear your belt. Put aside the TV, wear your belt. Read the Bible. Study the word of God. Oh, because the blood made a difference in your life and my life. Oh, that's a, so I'm so glad. I'm so glad that Jesus is, is the Lord of my life. Yes, sir. And so when Satan comes with his assaults, just remember, put on the full armor of God. We're going to deal with the next uh, 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 piece of armor next week. But right now, wear your belt. Put on your belt and put it on properly so that when you put these other pieces together, everything will hold in place. But right now, we need the word of God, and there's no, uh, no other uh, one who is the word of God except the logos of God, and the logos of God is none other than Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the word, I'm the living word that came down from heaven. Oh, he feeds us every day. Oh, gives you everything. He sustains you. How many of you all have, could have been dead and gone, almost had a wreck, almost uh, lost your life, or uh, maybe you were in the hospital, maybe this, that, and the other happened, but praise be to God, he sustained you. Thanks be to God for his amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. I was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's stand and let's stand in the presence of God and one another. Praise be to God. Perhaps there's someone today who doesn't know Christ as your personal savior. Therefore, you don't have your spiritual belt on. We invite you to come right now. You're not joining First Baptist Church. You're joining the Lord Jesus Christ. You're letting him, allowing him to be Lord and savior of your life. If that's you, then we invite you to come right now to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe somebody's listening to me online. You don't know Christ as your savior. Then I invite you to join us in prayer. If there's someone else who would like to join with First Baptist Church, then we invite you to come right now uh, to receive the right hand of fellowship in the life of this church. 
God bless you. And those of you that are listening online, you can call in. Our telephone number is 919-552-9150. Let us know your prayer request or whether you would like to join up or whether you just need somebody to pray with you about your salvation. We'll gladly have someone waiting by the phone to talk to you. Praise be to God. At this time, we're just going to have a, 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 a little singing uh, of a song uh, to give you the opportunity to respond to this gospel call. Let us sing together. Praise be to name. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, that perhaps there's someone who's listening online. And then perhaps there's someone here who hasn't accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. We ask, Lord, that they would make a decision and say yes to his will. And ask them to forgive them of their sins. And to come into their life. Because you did it on the cross for us by shedding your blood. And dying. And you got up on the third day that we might have life and have it to the full. We thank you for that. We pray for them. Then we pray for those who may just be struggling in their life and they just need some answers. They need some direction. They need your protection. They need you in some way, form, or fashion. And perhaps someone is spiritually struggling and not wearing the belt properly. We pray, dear Lord, that you would grant unto them this favor now where they would get into the word like they've never gotten before and understand that you are there every step of the way. You've given us this tangible book to look at on as regular as we would like to so that we can live life to the full and have peace and have tranquility, have whatever we need to make it from day to day. This is our prayer and we ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we indeed do pray. And let everybody say, Amen. Oh. yourselves for our offering at this time uh, we want you to be as liberal as you possibly can and those of you that are giving online you may you may proceed and those of you that are giving online if you will uh, you can give by sending it to First Baptist Church Fuquay P.O. Box 432 Fuquay is spelled F-U Q U A Y Fuque Verena NC 27526. You can send it by way of PayPal if you go to our website and you can give online. We would love for you to be as liberal as you possibly can and so certainly appreciate that. Glory. Also, and I just want to point out the fact if you decide to mail it to the church, First Baptist Church, FV, attention, attention to offerings, P.O. Box 14332, Fuquay Verena, 27526. Praise God. Our physical address is 105 
Northeast, I mean, I'm sorry, Northwest Street. Northwest is one word, Northwest Street. We would love to have you. Praise God. Come and visit us anytime. We're going to be officially opening soon. I'll be giving that announcement real soon. Praise be to God. We're going to ask the deacon to come forward. Deacon Davis is going to come forward to offer up the offertory prayer. Praise God. We give Bow our heads for prayer. Our Father in heaven, and we just thank you for another bright and sunny day, oh God. We thank you for your, your blessings. We thank you for your angels being in here to celebrate your son Jesus. God, we just thank you for every person. Thank you for the gift. The word says that you will multiply the gift from 10 up to 100 times. So we uh, thank you, God, for another beautiful day. We thank you for blessing everyone. I thank you for healing me from my surgery this past week. Oh, God, I thank you for healing me from cancer. I thank you for every blessing for every person present in this place. Yes. In Jesus' holy name, we give you all praise and all honor. Church say amen. Amen. God. Thank God. Thank you, Deacon Davis. We really do appreciate it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Again, thank you all, one and all, for your liberal, liberal giving. Praise be to his name. He's worthy to be praised. I just want to leave you with this a thought. And the title of my sermon today was You Need Your Belt. Not talking about this physical belt, but your spiritual belt. And that belt is none other than the word of God. Read it today. It'll bless your heart. Let us stand in the presence of God and one another. Hallelujah. Our Father, we thank you for this opportunity and privilege to share and feast on your word together as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Thank you for our visiting friends and thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the rain this morning and the sunshine this afternoon. We thank you, Lord, for our families, and we thank you for one another and how wonderfully you have blessed us with health and strength, reasonable portion of health and strength. And God, until we meet together again, we ask that you would be with everyone under the sound of our voice and those that are listening online. This is our prayer. We ask it in Jesus now. And now, may the grace of our God and the love of Jesus and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us now, henceforth, and forever. everyone.